Hayo haya ish. Uru'u enenu od. Once there was a man. Look, now he is gone forever. These were the words of Chaim Nachman Bialik, which come to mind at a memorial service for a man who knew and loved Bialik. When we come to a service like this, to mourn the death of any human being, a sense of strangeness, of unreality, takes hold of us. Is it possible that one who represented life to us, warm, vital, sensitive, reacting, purposeful, now has been transformed into lifeless nothingness? Part of us refuses to accept this judgment. We cry out in anguish, why must it be? But part of us has resigned itself to the fact of life, knowing that death is inevitable, knowing that this is the way of all flesh, knowing that this is an irreversible decree. Kimot namut v'chamayim hanigarim marza asher lo yeyasefu. For what we must needs die and are as waters spilt on the ground which cannot be gathered up again. Raikin Benari was an extraordinary individual whose like we shall not see again. It was once said of Solomon Schechter that he reminded you of no one else but himself. That you can say of our beloved friend, Ben Ari. He was born Near Kiev, he grew up a family, four brothers. In his youth, he was sent to the Polytechnicum to be trained for a scientific education. But he turned away from science. He loved the theater. And all his life, he was a man of the theater. He gloried in many things, but above all, in his part in establishing the world-famous Moscow Habima, his excellent history of the Habima, which many of us have read in Yiddish or in English translation, captured not only an outstanding prize, but the high praise of many sensitive and knowledgeable critics. In that book, he captured the passionate idealism of the Moscow Habima. In a revolutionary age, this was the strangest and most remarkable endeavor to produce plays in a language that audiences could not in the main understand in a land where a government looked upon that language with suspicion and hostility. What chutzpah, what brazen arrogance, Raikin Ben Ari and all those who were associated with the Moscow Habima demonstrated then. Ben Ari is now part of Jewish history the history of our renaissance and rebirth in the 20th century. When our ancient language, the Hebrew tongue, 
It came again, a living tongue, when our Hebraic culture was revived and renewed. And we owe to him and to his colleagues an enormous debt of gratitude for their courage and their stubbornness. They had the stuff of pioneers. They had the spirit of Chalutzim. Though they did not live on a kibbutz, on the borders of Israel, they were yet Chalutzim in a profound sense. When Ben Ari came with the Moscow Habima to the United States, fate would have it that he and many of his associates remained here. And in the course of time, he went through many struggles and hardships through the years of the Depression, always seeking to create Yiddish theater, Hebrew theater, establishing the Pargod, the first Hebrew theater in New York City. He was associated with one of the great giants of 20th century theater, Erwin Piskator, at the New School of Social Research. And there, Ben Ari trained many of the fine young talents who have enriched the cultural life of America and the world. And when he came out to the West Coast, he established his studio here, to which gravitated many of his former students. They delighted in helping him train future thespians, future stars, of the stage and screen and television. He was a great actor, but he was an even greater teacher. He had an unusual talent for bringing out the potential in people. I sometimes thought when I observed him with young people at Brandeis camp that he was working a la Itzim Avanim. But he had a magic power to evoke imagination in people, to open up their eyes, to unplug their ears, to uh, widen their horizons, to make them sensitive and aware. How many young people here in our own community and around the country did he move and inspire with his interpretations of the great roles in Jewish theater? How many of us did he inspire with his insightful interpretations of the magnificent stories of the Tanakh, the way he read the unforgettable passages of Job and the Song of Songs and the Book of Kohelet? what magic he could perform with rank amateurs who had never acted before, suddenly brought together to prepare a script for presentation within 24 hours. The sparkle of this man, his human warmth, his unflagging dedication to his work brought even the most phlegmatic of us to heights of expression we had never known before that we possessed. Now, I never saw him on the stage, and I was never a pupil of his. I knew him only as a friend, as a human being whose handshake, whose smile, whose warm embrace made me always feel that I was part of his inner family. Ben Ari had the face of an actor, one of the most expressive faces I have ever seen. It was dark, and his dark eyes were alive with feeling. 
His face could light up with a smile that made you feel as if the sun had come out of the clouds. His name was heroic, Ben-Ari, taken from the acronym of his father's name, Yaakov Aaron Reichen. And he chose to call himself Ben-Ari and to take his father's last name as his first name. Ben-Ari, the son of a lion. It was a heroic name, and there were times when he lifted his stentorian voice and made it resound like the roar of a lion. But you and I know that he was far from being a lion. He was rather a gentle, thoughtful, quiet person. His face had a tragic cast about it, but the spirit within was comic, bubbling over most of the time with good spirit, with wit and wisdom. He had the charm of a human being who touched people not only on the stage, but in real life. The two words which are often used in the world of the theater, one is personality and the other is character. The word personality comes from the Latin persona, which means to speak through the mask. In that sense, Ben Ari was not a personality. The great roles he performed and the dramas he presented were not masks through which he spoke. Rather, he was a character, a word that coming from the Greek means to carve, to engrave on rock, on stone. Ben-Ari did not put on a role. He lived it. And when he was off stage, he did not pose as an actor. He was the real thing, a man of flesh and blood, of heart and soul, a man whose like we shall not see again. Today is a day of sorrow for many, many people. But it is a day of special sorrow to his beloved wife, Nusya, to his daughter, Rina, and son-in-law, Myron, and to the four lovely grandchildren whom Raikin Ben-Ari had the nachas to see. Nusya, you have known Ben-Ari since you were 14 years of age. In fact, his sister married the brother he went to visit in Moscow. You have shared a lifetime with him, a lifetime of travel and trouble, and also a lifetime of joy and fulfillment. Side by side together, 